We'll start a new project and look at how we can enable and disable buttons, or really any control on a Windows form here. I'm going to change the name of this form to reflect what's going to happen. Again, enabling and disabling buttons, and we're going to also look at some border styles and things we can do with labels and buttons. So there's more coming as well. We're going to need three buttons to get us going. So I'm going to make this form a little bigger and then go over to the toolbox and grab three buttons. I'll just double click on button three times. One, two, three, and I've got three buttons. I'll space them out a little bit, but I want to show you how we can change the properties of all three buttons at the same time. So I'm going to use control and left click to highlight multiple objects at the same time. So I've got all three of these buttons selected now by control and left click on a mouse or whatever you need to use on your touchpad. And there's a bunch of properties we can change. If I change the size of one, I'm changing the size of all of them. If I change the font of one, it will change the font of all of them. So of course the default type is very small, so I'll pick something larger. But you'll notice when we get going on this, when you change the font of one, you're changing the font of all of them. There, all three got changed. As long as all three things are selected, any of those properties on the right you can be accessed and you can change it for all three. You can click away from these buttons, like I'm going to click left click on the form and that unselected them. And you can also maybe hit escape once or twice and that will release so you're not highlighting or selecting all the buttons. I'm going to rearrange them slightly now. And then I'll click once on button one. And I'm going to give this a new name, BTN Enable, E-N-A-B-L-E -E, with a capital E. And the text of this will indicate that we're going to enable the green button. I'm going to make button two a green button. You can make it whatever color you want or whatever special thing you want it to be. But I'm going to have the text of this button say that the green, we're going to enable the green button. And that's going to eventually be button two. I'll go down to button three and I will change its name to BTN Disable with a capital D. And this will disable the green button. And that's what the text will indicate. Again, you can use a different color when we get to button two. Just have that planned right now. Well, we need to put access keys in front of these. So I'm going to put an ampersand in front of the D so it can be accessed with Alt D. And I'll put an ampersand in front of the E for BTN enable the text of that one so it can be accessed with Alt E. Now let's go to what's going to be the green button. I'll call it BTN Green. If you're using a different color, you might go with that. And I'll change its text property to indicate that this is the green button. There. Of course, it doesn't look very green right now, so I'm going to head up to the background color or back color and change it to something green. And now it's pretty hard to see the dark foreground color on a dark background color. So I'll go make the foreground color lighter since the button is so dark. There. Now if we run the program, we can still access all the buttons. They're all enabled right now. They can all be clicked. We haven't written any code yet, so nothing happens, but they're all currently enabled. But when the program starts, we want the green button to be not enabled or disabled. So we're going to go to the property called enabled. And it's either true or false. There is no disabled property. Enabled is either true or false. And we'll make it false at the very start. I'm going to go down to the toolbox and get a label that's going to display the status of the green button. So I'll double click on a label and I'll drag it over here to the right hand side of the form. Right now it's very small and I want to adjust the auto size property so I'll make it false. Make the label a lot larger and then of course I'm going to need to make the font a lot larger as well. I will change the name of this label. I'll call it LBL status with a capital S. 
you can call it whatever you like, maybe LVL display, whatever you think makes sense. Got to make this a lot easier to read. So I'll pick something that makes it easier to read with a bigger font size. And I'm going to align this text in the middle of the label. So I'll go to text align. Currently it's anchored to the top left. I'm going to anchor it into the middle center. And I'll save all. I haven't done that lately. And I'll change this text to indicate at the start of the program that the green button is not enabled. Or you could say it is disabled. They mean the same thing. But remember the only property we really have is the enabled property, which is either true or false. So when we run the program, you'll notice that the green button is kind of darkened out because you can't do anything with it. It's disabled. So it's not enabled. We're going to need to write some code that will allow it to be enabled. So I'll double click on BTN enable and we'll write some code that will actually enable the green button. So it is the green button that we want to affect. So we'll go with BTN green dot enabled. That's the property we want to change and set it equal to true and remember a semicolon. And we're going to update the status that's in that label and let the users know that now the green button has been enabled. So LVL status dot text equals and in quotation marks something about the green button being enabled. Remember to put a semicolon at the end of this line. Let's run the program and watch what happens when we click the enable button. Hey, the green button is now enabled and the text of the label changed to let the users know the green button is enabled. Now you pause the video and see if you can code the BTN disable click event. Look at what we did to enable the button and see if you can write the code that's going to allow users to disable the green button when they click on the button that says it's going to disable the green button. We've got the code written, so we enable the green button and we can disable the green button. Enable, disable, enable, disable. And then my message pops up in the label. So you can quickly see the code that I wrote. Hopefully you had success doing that. Let's get some code for when we press the green button so that something changes in the label as well so the users know the green button was actually clicked. So we'll say something about the green button. I'll go with hooray for the green button. That lets users know that they actually were able to click the green button, which of course is only possible when it is enabled. Can't click it now because it's not enabled. Now we can click it because it is enabled, but now it's not enabled, so we can't access the green button. I think you get the idea. Should have put an access key on the green button, probably Alt-G, but I forgot to do it. Let's look at some ways we can adjust the border style of the label if you choose. I never require this, but you might like it. So if you go with a fixed single, you'll get a single pixel all the way around the label. And that might be something that you like. Another choice besides none is fixed 3D. So it kind of looks like it's popping out or popping in, however you want to look at it. Uh, you might like that. That's how it looks. So choices on the border style for a label are none, fixed 3D, and fixed single with a single pixel. We can do some interesting stuff with buttons too. So I'll go over to the enable button and over in the F's here in alphabetical order is flat style. The default is standard. I'll change it to flat. So look what happens when we run the program now. You can see it there in the design a little bit. It now has a border around it. It's actually one pixel thick. Uh, right now it's black. Now we click on flat appearance and we can change the border color. So you can get a different color if you like. I'll go with that something along the lines of purple and pink there or fuchsia. And you can see one pixel around. It's got that border. Just underneath that in flat appearance is border size. So we can make it thicker. I'll go with four. Now it's four pixels thick all the way around. Maybe that's what you want. Drag this over a little bit so it stays inside what you can see. Underneath that are two more things. Mouse down 
bat color and mouse over bat color. Mouse over is when the mouse is over it, what happens to the background of the button. So I'll pick a lighter shade of pink there. And then when the mouse hovers over that button, you see that it changes colors in the background. And then one more thing we can change is mouse down background color. When the user clicks, left click, especially on the mouse, what happens if the mouse is over the button? So there it is. You see the aqua show up. Mouse down is the aqua. So those are all things you can do for fun. Maybe you want to do that with some of the buttons you have. Remember, you have to change the flat style to flat in order for any of the flat appearance things to work.